Thank you, Neil. So I've been asked to talk to you about cabbage, and uh, got 15 minutes uh, to do this in. 12. 12, yeah, yeah, there's a little counter back there. Good. So welcome uh, to all of you, and uh, uh, this gets bigger every year, and I hope you had a good time last night. Um, so in 2014, cabbage turned 50. Uh, the first uh, survivor from coronary bypass surgery was done uh, down the road over here. Uh, by Ed Garrett, Dr. DeBakey, and Dr. Howell. And interestingly, the first use of the Lima to the LAD was in 1964 by, uh, by Kolosov in Russia. Um, the evolution of cabbage really uh, started with uh, cardiopulmonary bypass in the early 1950s that was invented by James Gibbon, um, angiography by Mason Soans at the Cleveland Clinic in 1962, and then cardioplegia which allowed uh, one to stop the heart and to perform the sort of microvascular surgery uh, that's necessary for coronary arteries, was developed uh, by Brainbridge, uh, Mark Brainbridge at St. Thomas's Hospital in London uh, in the 1970s and Brett Schneider in Germany. And variations of both of those solutions are still in use today uh, and are the most widely used cardioplegic solutions. Um, off pump coronary bypass surgery uh, started in the 1990s, and uh, I'm not going to go into a discussion about off pump, on pump, or anything like that. This is just going to be a general discussion about uh, the role of cabbage in the treatment of stable coronary artery disease and um, uh, various methods of minimally invasive coronary bypass surgery uh, began in the early 2000s and continue today. So, we're here to talk about really uh, the basics, uh, and there's a lot to talk about, but the basis for trials, the evidence basis for cabbage, excuse me, is based in three large trials in the 1970s and the 80s, which compared cabbage to medical therapy. It's very important that you look these trials up because they do form the foundation for uh, 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 coronary bypass surgery. Uh, interestingly, uh, and, and not surprisingly, in these trials, less than 10% of patients received a left internal mammary artery graft, because it was not a commonly performed graft at that time. Um, and this, of course, is not the case today, where almost 100% of patients, perhaps 95, will receive a left internal mammary artery graft. And we have lots of evidence to show that, that it is, in fact, a, a powerful predictor of survival following coronary bypass surgery. Medical therapy, of course, then uh, was, not, was not what it is today uh, with statins, uh, beta blockers, um, and, um, and uh, aspirin, uh, aggressive control of high blood pressure, and so on and so forth. Risk factor modification um, is much more sophisticated today than it was back then. Um, so the, th the three trials were the coronary artery surgery study, uh, which looked at patients with triple vessel disease and an ejection fraction of 35 to 50%. This was published in 1983 in circulation. The VA study, which looked at triple vessel disease and poor left ventricular function, uh, that was uh, 1984 um, in the New England Journal, and the European coronary surgery study, which looked at patients with left main disease, triple vessel disease, uh, and uh, double vessel disease with proximal LAD. That was in 1980 uh, in, in The Lancet and updated in 1988 in the New England Journal of Medicine. So these are sort of seminal trials that I think it's important for you to know about. Um, and <clears throat> uh, the uh, 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 Yusuf uh, uh, really provided a very nice review in 1994 in The Lancet where he basically updated data from seven randomized controlled trials of cabbage versus medical therapy, not versus PCI, versus medical therapy, um, and showed that cabbage improved survival and symptoms, and the benefits were seen most uh, clearly in patients with triple vessel disease, left main stenosis, impaired left ventricular function, uh, severe symptoms and positive exercise ECG. Um, now, the benefits of cabbage uh, were underestimated for severe disease because most patients who were enrolled in these trials, not surprisingly, uh, were low-risk patients, and the results were on an intention-to-treat basis. And 40% of medical patients in these trials that I spoke of crossed over into the cabbage arm. Only 10% received an IMA and there was no survival benefit that was seen for cabbage in single or double vessel disease with normal LV function. So the recommendations for future trials were that there should be a higher proportion of patients for whom cabbage is known uh, to be superior to medical therapy. In other words, sicker patients should be included. Slide isn't advancing. 
Ah, there we go. Can, can we go back two slides, please? Yeah. Okay. So the major morbidity of cabbage, of course, is stroke, um, which is multifactorial. It could be related to the heart-lung machine, cardiopulmonary bypass, the aorta, um, cerebrovascular disease, which many of these patients have uh, uh, as well. Myocardial infarction can occur as a consequence of coronary bypass surgery and, of course, pulmonary renal complications. And you can calculate the specific risks uh, that any one patient has um, using the Society of Thoracic Surgeons online risk calculator. It's very simple to do. You simply Google STS risk calculator and the top hit that comes up is this online template. You simply enter the patient's data into it and um, it takes all of three or four minutes and it spits out a score and tells you what the risk of mortality is, the risk of renal failure, uh, uh, prolonged ventilation, et cetera, et cetera. And this is based on a database of over 1.5 million patients, and it's growing. It's actually close to 2 million now. Uh, the overall mortality in this database is 2% for all comers and 0.5% in the lowest risk group, which is astonishing when you consider what a complicated operation and sophisticated operation coronary bypass surgery is. Now, cabbage has evolved in other ways as well. Uh, various conduits have been used, uh, the internal mammary arteries, both of them, and there are discussions that are still going on as to whether it's better to use two or one mammary. Uh, the most recent trial that looked at that in a randomized fashion, the ART trial, uh, was, uh, uh, was published in 2016 that showed overall there was no benefit to using two internal mammary arteries versus one. Uh, the updated, the 10-year results of the ART trial will be um, uh, will be uh, presented later this year, um, and uh, we'll see what that shows. On-pump cabbage, off-pump cabbage, minimally invasive techniques, and a hybrid philosophy, which is something that's being looked at now. Uh, there's, a, uh, uh, there's a randomized trial uh, that has just started, uh, which has been um, uh, funded by the uh, uh, NHLBI, uh, and uh, they're finding, well, Recruitment is slow so far, but uh, we don't know if we'll ever get an answer to this question as to whether or not the Lima to the LAD plus stents for other vessels is as good as, as, uh, as uh, current techniques of multi-vessel cabbage. Now, this is something that you definitely need to uh, read, this paper in 1979, which was truly a, a landmark paper when Grunzig uh, 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 published. Andreas uh, Grunzig. Yeah, Andreas Grunzig. Um, um, uh, uh, really the father of PCI, I would say, a uh, uh, Swiss cardiologist who later moved to Emory and tragically died young in a plane crash, but published this in 1979, which was the first report of uh, balloon angioplasty um, of a coronary artery. And of course, since then, PCI has taken off and it's evolved greatly since the first report in 1979. You will, you will have a talk later in the session that, uh, that tells you more about it. And, and as a result, uh, uh, it claims equivalence to coronary bypass surgery and therefore claims parallel benefit over medical therapy. But the COURAGE trial in 2007, Neil always has trouble saying COURAGE, um, 2,287 patients randomized to PCI with optimal medical therapy and optimal medical therapy alone and showed that there was no difference in death or myocardial infarction with up to seven year follow-up. But PCI, and this is very important, PCI was better at relieving angina, but not myocardial infarction or death. So it confirmed the role of PCI as an effective therapy for patients who have symptomatic coronary artery disease. Um, not advancing. There we go. Now, this is the most important trial that, uh, that I'm going to uh, talk about today. It's a contemporary trial, and it's extraordinary for a variety of reasons, the syntax trial. You must look this up and know, uh, know it in detail. This was a randomized controlled trial of drug eluting stents versus cabbage, 85 centers in Europe and the US, all comers to mimic the real world. And one of, the, one of the many remarkable things of the syntax trial is that of 4,337 patients who were screened, 3,075 were enrolled, 71%. And this is really an astonishing number because in most trials, you're looking at 10%, 15% of patients who were screened who were enrolled. 58% um, of these were randomized equally, and the remainder enrolled in a registry because they were deemed to be too complex for PCI. They were all screened by a heart team, and a composite endpoint of MACE was looked at. Uh, and the other thing, and 
many argue, uh, uh, really a second uh, major contribution of the syntax trial is that it, 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 uh, it uh, provided a mechanism for scoring the severity of coronary artery disease uh, and, uh, and, and thus was born the syntax score. <clears throat> which I think was a major contribution of this trial. This is a syntax score diagram, and uh, I, I wouldn't say it's done routinely, uh, but um, uh, I believe it takes, what, 10, 15 minutes to, uh, to less than that, two minutes, okay, there you go, uh, to, to actually generate a score. Uh, I've heard varying reports, but in any case, you can do it fairly quickly. Uh, and you can come up with a number. And basically, it tells you how complex the coronary disease is because we all know that there's three-vessel disease and there's three-vessel disease. On the left, you see a, uh, a patient with a relatively low syntax score, and on the right, a patient who's got uh, really uh, multiple lesions going all the way down his coronary arteries, which will give you a higher syntax score. Now, in the syntax trial, uh, uh, it, it, it showed that if you... It, the yellow line represents patients who had uh, uh, drug-eluting stents, and, uh, and the blue line, cabbage, and the overall survival at five years was uh, sig uh, um, significantly better in patients who had multivessel cabbage. This was in all comers. But significantly, when you broke it out into, um, uh, into terciles based on score, and the trial, of course, was not powered to do this, so it's important to mention that. Nevertheless, um, uh, it showed that in the, in the low score patients, there was no difference uh, between, uh, 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 between PCI and cabbage. And in the intermediate scores, the difference uh, was, was there, but, uh, uh, but the greatest difference was seen in the patients who had the highest syntax score. So patients with low complexity coronary artery disease we're beginning to see can be treated effectively, maybe just as effectively, um, with uh, multivessel PCI. Um, <clears throat> uh, they did also, can we go back one slide, please? I, I, I skipped over that. Yeah, so they did also uh, 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 make a recommendation that, that all patients really should be discussed by a heart team, which is something that is being done more and more now, uh, 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 taking a more multidisciplinary approach to, to, uh, uh, to the treatment of coronary artery disease. The FREEDOM trial, um, which looked at cabbage versus PCI and diabetics, very quickly showed that cabbage was uh, um, uh, superior to PCI, but the stroke rate was higher, which was obviously a significant concern. Uh, stroke rate was higher with cabbage. And these are some registry data from New York, uh, uh, which also showed that for patients with multivessel disease, cabbage uh, seemed to offer better outcomes at three years. So why is cabbage better than PCI? Well, PCI treats an isolated lesion in the proximal vessel. The complexity of the lesion affects the outcome. Cabbage bypasses the proximal two-thirds of the vessel where the current lesion and future threatening lesions occur. The complexity of the lesion is irrelevant. <clears throat> and this advantage of cabbage will persist even if stent restenosis is zero, okay? The lemur is protected from atherosclerosis, and we don't know why. It is the unquestioned standard for surgery in coronary artery disease and is used in greater than 97% of coronary bypass surgery. And we don't know whether the advantage of cabbage today accrues um, from the lemur or the whole ball of wax, the multivessel cabbage. It's impossible to dissect this out. Um, there's no head-to-head -head trial of SVG-only bypass versus stents because it wouldn't be ethical. Um, and um, the, the, uh, the influence of the Lima on survival was first pointed out by um, uh, Fred Loop at the Cleveland Clinic in 1986 and subsequent papers, uh, and here's a big one from the Cleveland Clinic, showed that uh, uh, repeat intervention for patients with coronary artery disease who had, had, who had, had previous cabbage with a patent Lima <coughs> could improve symptoms but had no impact on survival. Vein graft patency can be spotty, and this from the uh, PREVENT trial shows that the patency in this particular trial was around, um, uh, well, uh, about a 26% failure rate at one year. It varies from trial to trial, but most figures will say between 10 and 25% vein graft failure rate at one year. And we know that stents are constantly evolving and properly deployed uh, 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 in, the, in, the, in the correct lesion sets can have really um, astonishingly high success rates. The FAME-2 trial, uh, which is uh, 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 another 
contemporary trial that I think you need to be familiar with um, uh, showed that PCI was superior to medical treatment uh, uh, as long as PCI uh, was FFR directed. Got a flashing red light. Cut. Very good. Let me go to the last slide over here. So uh, the ongoing trials that may give more clarity are FAME 3 and the ischemia trial. The ischemia trial is a $100 million trial, uh, and uh, it was, I guess, started, what, three, four years ago, um, and the intention was to look at patients who had a greater than 10% ischemic defect and see if uh, they were uh, better off with medical therapy or some sort of intervention. The inclusion criteria have since been diluted. Uh, there's been much controversy over that, and we don't know whether this $100 million is going to be well spent or not. It's, a, uh, it's being done across uh, many centers uh, in many different countries. Um, there's other advances. Uh, well, FFR and IFR are now widely used to determine the significance of lesions, and CTFFR, or heart flow, is being validated and also has, uh, has potential. Uh, the summary is that uh, really I think the most effective way to treat patients with coronary artery disease is to take a multidisciplinary approach like one does for cancer. It's about disease management, it's about patients, not procedures. The syntax score has been a major contribution. The role of hybrid procedures are still completely undefined. And I think the heart team approach is essential for optimum care. Uh, and there are still many, many gray areas for decision-making in patients with coronary artery disease. Thank you. Thank you.